So in this video, hi, this is Skip Wilson here. What the heck am I doing? Okay, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Xcode. Xcode is an awesome program, a little daunting in the beginning, but once you get it, it's like no big deal. Um, I mean, I've used a lot of the other Apple products. You've got Final Cut, you've got iMovie. Okay, so it's a little more difficult than iMovie. It's about the same as uh, Final Cut, but the difference is instead of movies, you're dealing with code. This is a thing to edit code. That's a thing to edit movies. Relatively the same shtick. Um, so here's the thing. Let's open up Xcode. And I'm running 7.1.1, which is the latest one. It doesn't matter which version you're running as long as it's running Swift 2, which is everything before, you know, 7. Um, and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a playground. Let me just show you what happens when you click that playground button because you got three options there. The first two are really the ones you're going to deal with mostly. Uh, we're going to create a playground. Now I'm going to create this playground on my desktop just to show you what happens. What is a playground file? So here's some code here and basically what a playground is, is it allows you to just test out code and whatever you write on this left hand side gets compiled and written on the right hand side. Now in the case of this string here, um, notice that if I write str, which is this variable string, it actually prints it out over there. But in real life, in Xcode, when you're making a full blown app, if you just write str, nothing is going to happen. So that's really important. If in your, when you're testing your app, you should always do print and that will do similar thing on playground. But the most important is when you click this button down here, here's where the console is. Notice that I can type str, 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 you know, until the cows come home. It prints it here, but it only prints hello playground once because I printing stuff is what goes to the console. This is just evaluating it. It's really almost worthless. I mean, it is and it isn't because the point of this thing is to show you the progress of your code to see how the variables kind of come in and out. But the real actual outputting to console only happens with um, the actual printing. I'm going to show you something really quick. That is that if I open up the console and I just type Swift. Now, the first time you do this, you might have to accept some build settings and stuff like that. It's going to come up with a console here. Now, if I say var str equals hello playground, um, this is almost the same exact thing. Now, if I type str, you can see that it's saying some crap here, like dollar sign, whatever. The point is, is that it's string, but print str prints out a string. That's the huge difference between them. And I know that can be confusing in the beginning. Um, so these are two different ways that you can kind of test your code out. I really like the console. And a third way is you can use swiftstub.com, which is a website that I made. So if you don't have a Mac, just go ahead and go on there and you can try that out. But if you don't have a Mac, obviously you're not running Xcode, so you're probably not watching this video. Anyway, so here's in the console, you just type Swift. Uh, you can also run your Swift code from the console, but this main thing is about Xcode. So you also have this button and this button. And it, this just hides and shows these different columns and rows here. So if you want to see your console, you're going to press this one. It's going to show you that bottom thing where the console is. This side is where you can choose between running OSX or iOS as a platform where in OSX you're not going to have UI kit um, so those types of things aren't going to be available and in OSX you're going to have other stuff available I think you also have tvOS as the other type of operating system that you can play around with so that's really the playground in a nutshell. Now, I want to show you something really quick that's kind of cool. This playground file, like how does it exist? What is the deal with it? Well, it's actually a zip file. So if you rename it to, instead of to .playground to .zip, and you say, yeah, use the zip, um, it's going to say this doesn't exist, which is OK. And now we can take a look at what's inside this zip file. It's like a freaking hidden treasure box here. Look at this. So. The point is that you have this contents.swift, which is an actual Swift file. This is where your stuff actually exists. So if I were to open this in like Sublime Text, I drag this in here, you can see this is my actual code. Everything else here 
is this is an XML file and this is an XC workspace which has yet more data in it. XC workspace is actually another folder itself. So if you rename that, you can see what's inside of that. This is a binary file, yada, yada, yada. The point is that there is an actual Swift file in your playground. So if you want to, you can open it up. What good that is to you, I have no idea, but it's kind of cool. So we're gonna close this up and we're gonna delete our playground file. Now on to the real meat of Xcode. When you open this, you'll see your recently opened files. If you wanna clear that, if you're ever doing like a tutorial or something, you can go to open recent and click clear menu. It doesn't clear it immediately, but on the next time that you open up Xcode, you'll see that all that stuff is gone. That's the same as your recent stuff. Uh, the next thing to do is to create a new Xcode project. This is where you actually write your whole apps and stuff. Now, you can write an iPhone, iPad app. That's considered iOS, obviously. You can write a watch app, that's watch OS. You can write a TV app, that's TV OS. And you can write an OS X app, which is something for your Mac itself, and that's a Mac app. And within those, you have different types of things. In all of them, they have an application, which is like the app itself that you would be making for it. Now, for iOS, you can also make an accompanying watch app, which is not, you wouldn't create it through this application you would get through iOS and I'll show you how to do that in a second all of these things are just putting different text files into a folder I'm going to show you what happens when you do this it's just populating text files so you could create a master detail application from a single view application you can create a page based application from a single view application single view application is the most basic one you can even create a game from a single view application all of this is totally possible it's just going to populate your program or your application with more stuff, more default things to get you started in that direction. And some people like to say, I'm gonna build a master detail application, but I don't want them pre-populating it with their crap. I wanna use my single view application and, and go master detail on my own. And there's other ways to build apps too. It's not just master detail or single view or page based. There's other things. So don't think that this is your only choices. So we're gonna open up a single view application and we're just gonna call it my app which is like so creative the point here is that you're going to choose swift as the language the device now do you want it to just be for iphone or for ipad universal means both don't include core data unless you know how to use core data which is a whole nother thing altogether you can always leave unit tests in there and you can leave ui tests in there it's not going to harm anything because you should be testing anyway even if you don't know how to do it you'll learn later click next and we're gonna save it directly to our desktop because what this does is it actually creates a folder. And in that folder is your app stuff. But the most important thing is that your folder structures in here, it may not match the folder structure that you see in Xcode. Why would they do that? That seems completely insane. Who would do that? Well, that's the way it is. Like if you create a new folder in here, and then you go and look in your folder here, which should be the same thing. It may not be there like that. Look, do you see a base I project in here? No, you don't. So it doesn't exactly match. Now what some professional iOS and Apple programmers, Swift programmers are, or Objective-C programmers like to do is they like to arrange their stuff here, and then they like to arrange their folder structure here the same way. But you actually have to manually go and do that. So that's what you would do. Just know that so that if you start to do that, you're gonna be really confused. You're gonna have a couple of different things here. In every single one of them, you're gonna have this main.storyboard. This is gonna be your UI building thing. And when you click that, each one of these will open up a different type of editor for that thing that you want to edit. So for Swift files, it's gonna open up a text editor with color coding. For a main storyboard, it's gonna open up the UI view editor for the assets it's going to open up like a file type of thing where here I can add a new image or I can even drag an image into here and for the launch screen dot storyboard it's going to open up something similar to the main storyboard editor and info dot plist is basically going to open up a plist editor which is basically like a dictionary that is like visible that you can put crap in um, but the main two files here is your, your view controller and your app delegate. 
the app delegate is for everything having to do with the application level things having to do with the phone when the phone does stuff you'll get notified here that's what a delegate is it's like hey notify me of something you're delegating it to notify you of something and the view controller is where your code for your application will go and hopefully you'll be super organized and you'll split it into a bunch of different files and stuff like that you'll be really great the main storyboard is where you'll build some sort of ui components first of all let's select this view view controller and you can click through these different things and they have different types of selectors so we're not creating any classes we're not creating any cdefs you mainly want to deal with this third button here and when you type in button there now a button will pop up as an available option so button all the ui components are in the object library why it's a circle with a square in it i don't know maybe that's just supposed to represent an object so we can drag a button onto the screen when you drag you notice that you'll get these automatic like hinting hey it's in the middle things do not think for a second though that when you run this it will be in the middle because you have to add constraints to your button in order for that to work so let's see if we were to run this now with our button on the screen and let's call it press me now when i call it press me and it's no longer in the middle we have to re put it in the middle if we run this you'll notice that it may be in the middle or it may not appear at all look at that it's not in the middle what the heck man that doesn't make any sense and let's see if we rotate this because we have a rotating app it's not in the middle either like what type of crazy type of situation have we created here um so let's quit that and we're going to add some constraints to this so that we can strain the button to the middle and this is important because this is a thing of xcode in order to add constraints to this there's a couple different ways the easiest way i find is to hold control on your keyboard i'm holding control i'm going to click i'm going to drag now we're going to drag to the left and you can see that when we drag different things get highlighted see that we're going to add a constraint from the button to the view itself and it doesn't matter if it's straight or whatever but if you drag up you're going to get constraints that have to do with that direction drag to the left you're going to get constraints that have to do with the horizontal or vertical position so now we're going to center vertically in the container that's not going to move it it's going to say that we're adding a constraint that centers it that constrains it to the center we're going to hold control click drag again until the whole view highlights and now we're going to center it horizontally in the container now what just happened Notice that these constraints are different colors. They were originally orange and now they're blue. Blue means that your constraints are good to go. It's like you got the green light from Xcode. When you have constraints that are red, it means that it doesn't have enough information to place your button where you said you wanted to place it. It has to calculate all that. Now look over here, over here in this panel here, which by the way, if you need more room, you can click this button to get rid of it. Click this button to bring it back you'll notice that we have a hierarchy of our app. So notice that this is the scene. This is the view controller, which is always represented by that kind of yellow circle with the white square in the middle. And the view controller is going to control a view, right? So here's the view that the view controller controls. And that view controller also is represented by this code here in viewcontroller.swift and in here you can see a hierarchy of the crap that we have in here we have a button that says press me and if you click this it will actually highlight the button in here also if you click it here it will highlight the button over there so anything that you want to do to this button you can also do it to this item here so if you want to add constraints to this you can actually do hold control and drag stuff around and you can add constraints to that so there's multiple ways to add constraints. Also, here's our constraints, which are here. You can see that when we click the constraints, you can see it highlights the individual constraints. Now, if we highlight that button, you'll notice that there's this whole area over here. By the way, first of all, let's just run this and see if we did in fact fix stuff. So when we run it, we're gonna press this go button to run it. Now look, our thing is in the middle and if we rotate our screen 
it's still in the middle. Now how did I rotate the screen? I'm rotating it by holding command left or command right to rotate the screen. And when I rotate it, it actually rotates. Now why does this one rotate? You have to look in the settings of your project to see if you are allowing rotation. You may not want to deal with the rotation of your app. So if you go into this blue thing here, this will show you the settings of your app. And in under the general tab, you have capabilities, resource, all this crap here. The main ones you'll deal with, unless you're getting a little more advanced, you'll deal with build settings. But as a beginner or as someone like regular making that you're going to deal with general and you're going to deal with capabilities but in general you'll see device orientation and we are allowing landscape left and landscape right if we turn off landscape left and landscape right we stop the project from running which you can see it exited on here so now we can close that up if we want to or we can just run it again you'll notice that when we go to rotate this it just turns sideways it's like okay that's a portrait app only we can also just do landscape left and landscape right or just one of them you can also choose upside down and it will rotate to that accordingly so you have to stop it and run it again so there's a couple different ways to stop it uh, just know that if you do quit the simulator like this instead of pressing stop sometimes it will throw errors in xcode and that's okay um, but here now you have a button now we're in our project settings because we're click, we clicked here. We'll go back to our main storyboard, which is now where we have our UI. Now we have a button, and we can see different details of this button by going into this third column here. Now notice that we have a column here, we have a column here, we have a column here. This column here is controlled by this button, and this column here is controlled by this button so you can hide and show that column and the shortcuts for all of these and this column here is controlling that column look at that isn't it awesome so this is kind of like a context area it's going to show you stuff relevant to what you're selecting so if we select this button and if you're having a hard time selecting the button remember you can always select it over here like that so we select our button over here and we're selecting it here, which makes it easy. We can click through these different menus. The help one will say, hey, this is a button and this is all of the stuff you need to know about it. This right here is the identity inspector, the attributes inspector, all sorts of fun stuff, the size inspector, and you have the connections inspector. Now notice that in the connections inspector, we have all these different things. We have touch up inside, dragged, enter. Um, these are all the different things that you're going to connect to your code. You're going to say, when I touch up inside, I want to connect it to my code to do something. Now, where is the code? Well, let's take a look here. On the top level, we have the view controller. If we click the view controller, everything here is also represented in this window here. So we click the view controller and we click this. Now, this is relating to some code. I already told you it's viewcontroller.swift, but does something on the screen tell you that? Yes. The identity inspector here, which is this one that kind of looks like a newspaper, will show you the class associated with thing, that view controller. So if you see view controller, you can actually click this little arrow next to it and it will take you to the file. So if I click that, it's going to open up viewcontroller.swift. Let's try it. Boop. And it opens up viewcontroller.swift. So it's all kind of connected. That's the idea is that you want to know that it's connected. Now we can connect this button into our viewcontroller.swift to say like when something happens, that button like it's clicked, but since you're on an iPhone, it's going to be tapped. We want some code to run. So in order to do that, we have to be able to drag this button into the view controller. Easiest way to do that is to open up this assistant editor, which will open up two files at the same time. Now it kind of helps to kind of make some room here. So we're gonna make some room. The assistant editor is click it like that. Now, it if you just click it, it's going to try and automatically find the right file for you that it should open. We know 
that it should be the viewcontroller.swift and you can see that it did in fact open viewcontroller.swift. If you're unsure, you can open up the file menu over here and when you select this, you can see that we can open up view controller swift. Now this is a little confusing because when you select stuff, it's gonna automatically go here, you know, but click that view controller. We have the assistant editor open. When we open the assistant editor, it's automatically gonna switch to the right file. Now if it doesn't switch to the file that you want, you can say, I don't want it automatic, I want it manual and I want uh, this one. You know, you can do it manually. A lot of times it'll choose the right file, sometimes it'll choose the wrong file, so you have to be able to manually choose the right file. Now we have our view controller. We can select our button here, or if we open this panel, we can select the button. Remember, both of these are representations of the same button, so we can either drag from here or drag from here. I'm gonna drag from here. Let's drag from here. You hold control. When you hold control and drag, you'll see a little thingy that you can drag, and you can actually drag it over to your file here. Now there's two things that you can do with this. You can either make a reference to the button in the code, or you can make a function that runs when the button gets pressed. So let's make a function or a method, since we're in a class, that gets run when the button's pressed. So hold control, drag it over there, let go of the mouse, and if you're still holding control, you can let go of that too. You either have an outlet or an action. Outlet is a reference to it. Action is the name of the function that's going to run. So we're gonna say, press me tapped. And what do we want to happen? We want it to happen when touch up inside. Touch up inside is the one that you'll use most often to say like that was tapped. Tapped is like touch up inside. That's the one. And the rest of it you can leave alone. And when you click connect, it will write the method for you. It'll write the function for you. And here it is. And you know that it's connected because we have a dot here. And look at what happens when you hover the dot. You can see what it's actually connected to. That is freaking awesome. So you know that that button is connected to this stuff. And IB action says, you know, when there's IB action, you know that something is connected to something. Not only that, just to give you all of the possibilities, because maybe you want to disconnect this. One thing you could do is you could just delete that, that function. But the connection itself exists. I'll show you where it exists. So let's make sure we save this. You can do Command S to save or File Save. Let's take a look here. Now we're in this assistant editor mode, which is like two files open at the same time. We'll close our navigator and we'll go back into the single file view. Sometimes that will usually open just the left side. Let's see what happens. So you can see that it opens the left side. Okay. Now we're going to open up our context thing over here where all of our related stuff is. We have our button selected. You can see it's selected here. If you go to this last one, that's where all the connections are. And you can see now that we have touch up inside is connected to the view controller, our method called press me tapped. And we wrote that method ourselves. If we wanted to delete that connection, we could delete it here and you would no longer have that connection. Now, if we delete it here and we save our file, we open up the file inspector over here, the file Explorer, I guess you could call it, and we go to the view controller. That method still exists, but you know it's not connected because this circle is not filled. It's now empty. So let's connect it again. Now we're going to connect it to an existing method. Now when I click the assistant editor, it automatically opened up. You can see the wrong thing. So we're going to select over here and we're going to click the main storyboard and that's going to open up the right file. So there we go. And we're going to see press me is here. And now we want to connect press me to this method that we already have written. Okay. So we can click. And if you drag into the wrong thing, you can press the escape key on the keyboard to kind of get out of that. So make sure that you drag not from the constraint, but from the button. That's why I like to use that panel there. So let's close up our file menu and open up this thing 
which is the hierarchical representation of the storyboard. We're going to hold control, we're going to drag it to this method here. Now, not like this, because that means it's going to insert something there. You want to get it to highlight it like that. That means this method, not like this, not the line, but like this to an existing method. And it does that and it blinks a couple of times. Now looky, looky, we have the connection. And if we hover over this, the connection has been made. So there's multiple places that this connection has been made and we are good to go. And from here, remember I said you can print stuff. Um, so we're gonna print a message that just says the um, button was clicked. And we'll save it. And we shouldn't have any errors at this point. And if you do have errors, like if I just wrote some junk down there, the errors are going to appear up here in this bar. And it's going to say you have one error. How do you find out what the exact error is? Well, one thing is if you already have this, you can click the red guy there and it says use of unresolved identifier. Basically that variable doesn't exist. But if you really want to find out the details, you can go to the, the error section. The error section is in the file explorer area. You can see you have these tabs up here. This one is the error thing. Now, if that wasn't opened, you can click on this error itself up there and it will take you to all of your errors. And you can see, you can see them by file. I don't usually have tons and tons of errors at one time because I usually resolve the errors before I move on but you may have them, so it kind of organizes them here. You can click it, and it'll open the file directly. Now we have two files open, it's kind of confusing. Let's go back to our single view, since we already connected it. So you're gonna click Show Standard Editor, we're back to one solid view, and we're good, good to go there. So now we know that that shouldn't be there, we delete it, and it, once we save it, you can see the error disappears from here, error disappears from there, you're good to go. Now, you can run this, we already have something running, you can see because the stop button is not disabled, you click it and you can see it exits it on the simulator. You don't have to exit the simulator, it'll improve your startup time if you don't exit the simulator because it doesn't have to start up the simulator. We're gonna run this app, click press me, and that should open up the console. Boop. And it automatically opens up the console, says button was clicked. Now, if that console wasn't open, this middle button opens up that bottom thing. But because a new message came up, now we're clicking it and we've already closed it so it's not opening it again. So we're gonna open it ourselves and we can see that yes, the button was clicked many, many times. So that's one thing that you can do there. Uh, is that this console kind of deals with that bottom opening, closing, opening, closing. So this third column is always kind of context sensitive to what you're dealing with. So if we kind of click on, if we kind of click in between the words of print, if you open this, you can actually see what it does. It'll say, writes the textual representation of the item separated by separator and terminated by terminator into the standard output. So you can see that print actually takes more parameters. So that's like really cool. We can click on view controller and it'll say declaration view controller and it's part of UI view controller. And you can click this like a hyperlink or like a link in a web browser. Declared in view controller.swift, you can click on that. It'll open the file for you. And that's awesome. And that is kind of all you need to know about that sort of stuff. And What's really, really cool is that as you're making more files, and let's go back to the files by clicking this folder here. Let's say that we make another file and we call it uh, person.swift. And you can just, let's do that again here. We're gonna right click on the file here and we can click new file. The other way to do it is to highlight this, and go to file, new file. And let's just delete our person file. We'll click that. We'll right click it. The way you right click, uh, you can hold control on the keyboard and click, or if you have it set up right, you can put two fingers down and click. That's what I use all the time. And we can delete it there. And you wanna make sure that if you wanna delete it permanently, move it to the trash. Don't remove the reference, move it to the trash. Otherwise, if you open this, you'll still see it 
but you won't have a reference to it in your folder structure over here. All right, so we're gonna right click here. We're gonna to go to new file and we're gonna choose a Swift file and we're gonna click next or enter because these blue things you can just hit enter. We're gonna call this person and it's gonna automatically add the dot Swift on the end for us. So we have person.swift. Now we're gonna do class. We're gonna call this person. And now here's something that's really cool. I'm gonna type class and it's gonna come up with a helper menu. How did I do that? I hold control, I press space, it brings up this whole menu here and we want to choose a Swift class. We do that and it has these things that you can fill in. Notice it already has the name highlighted. So we're going to call this person. Now how do I get down to the properties if it's more stuff I want to fill in? Hit tab and now you're down to the properties. So we can say var name is a string optional and var height is also a string is uh, let's say it's a int, int optional so now we have our person class we don't need an initializer we'll save it with command s and we'll go back to our view controller now you can also get back to that file by choosing up here you'll see my app and we can choose person.swift so we'll just choose right here view controller so Within this view controller, now we'll make a new person. We'll say just locally var p is equal to a new person. Look at that. We have a new person. We can say p.name. And now what's really cool about this, let's say that that's equal to Jeff. What's really cool about this is that if you hold the command key, you get these hyperlinks that come up. So we can actually click on person and it'll take us right to that file. So if you're looking for a reference to stuff, now what happens if you click on UI view control? We didn't write the code for that, but we can click on it anyway. And you can see all of the kind of placeholder code that Apple has created for you. Now, we just came into this code and now we could click view controller to go back, but we wanna to go to the last file. We kinda of don't remember what it is, so you can use two fingers and swipe to the left and it will go back to the previous file. You can go two fingers and swipe to the right. It'll go to the previous file. We can swipe twice and we should get to that person thing. So this is going in order of the latest files that you looked at. So that's really, really helpful because you're gonna be switching between files all the time and it helps to just be able to switch back and forth. So let's say UI view controller, you don't know all of the different parameters you can do for a thing, whatever it is. Hey, look, they have an optional in it, an optional constructor there. Hey, look, they have view if loaded. It even contains the documentation here. Uh, let's go back, we'll swipe left to go back. That means that we should be able to do um, view did load. Well, we already have view did load. Um, and then if you click again, in this view did load you're going to see the description here called after the controller's view is loaded into memory and so you can really play around with this stuff and if you're just in a blank area here and you want to see what things are available you can hold control press space that always brings up this menu here now we have command we'll click here and we can see that we have view did load we also have is view loaded. So we don't wanna to have to write the whole signature of that function out. So we'll just go right here and we wanna just start typing is view loaded. That's the one we want. Now you can click on that or you can hit enter on your keyboard. Voila, it writes the entire signature of the function exactly the way you wanted it. And it's highlighted some code here, which you can either press delete to delete it or whatever you want. Now. What happens with something like touches began? Now this is giving an error because it says it needs to return a Boolean. So if we just say return true, it will stop saying that error. Watch this. There's a function called touches began. We start typing it. That's for when you touch on the screen. I know this because I've worked with this stuff before. And once you click that, now you have the code that comes up in here. Now what happens if we have a method 
that takes multiple parameters. Like let's say we have a function that's called go and we say when do we want to go and it's an integer and um, now which is going to be a boolean and uh, the name of the go for some reason you would have that and it's going to return a boolean. Now all of that stuff you know let's say that we did that and we want to call that function from touches began but we don't remember all the crap that goes into it so we can just start typing go we hit enter it's going to say you need to type something for when and it needs to be an integer so we'll hit two now we're going to need to go to the now now you could just kind of tab you know press the arrows over there or you can press tab which is really easy to go to the next parameter now true and we want the last parameter name needs to be a string and we can type hello there now check this out let's say we do that again sometimes these little placeholders they get kinda funky we're getting an error because it doesn't return a boolean but let's say that you type go now you, you don't want that placeholder to be there you can just hit enter and it'll just replace it with the word int and we're like moving our arrow key over there but we don't need to we can just hit tab hit enter now we have the word bool we hit tab hit enter we have the word string sometimes you just want to pop those bubbles so it's easiest just to just do that like that it's just easier just hit enter and now we have some errors so when needs to be an int and now we're getting an error we can click this to see the error expected expression in list of expressions or we could click this up here it'll take us right to our errors there we can click this and it'll highlight it it'll kind of highlight it like that so that's really neat so that's a lot of the stuff that you really need to just get going with xcode so we'll take a look in our file explorer we'll go back to our main storyboard we still have our press me here you notice as I select these we get the constraints that come up and we have our console down here so now you know that you can kind of minimize things oh and one other thing I want to show you so we select press me and we drag it we've ruined the constraints they're now orange how can we fix that well we could try and drag it back to the right spot which will fix the constraints but it's not always that easy down here are these buttons you can click them and kind of see what happens here you can add new constraints here you can pin stuff yada 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 but over here is the magic this last one says fix stuff you can say update frames or add missing constraints if we add the missing constraints it's going to change the constraints but we dragged it to the wrong spot we want to drag it back to the right spot what we can do is open our thing over here we still have these constraints we click, click press me, we go here, and we say update frame. When you click update frame, it'll put it back in the right spot to be where your constraints said that they are. Now if you do this and you unselect stuff and you get it all weird, select it over here so that you have the constraints and the button selected at the same time. Go to update frame. Now, what happens if you want to put this up here? And you say I don't want it in that constraint anymore you could delete this constraint and you know drag a new constraint and all that stuff vertically space sometimes you can just say update constraints it'll delete the old constraint and put in a new constraint for you now you got to make sure that you look at the constraints that it's adding otherwise you may screw the pooch now when you have a lot of views here you can pinch zoom to zoom out when you do that, you won't be able to have as many options here, but you can do that. When you have a lot of views, it's very helpful. And last but not least, this arrow tells you where your application enters. Now, if you delete the arrow, you're going to get an error when you try to run this app. So you need to put the arrow back. How do we put the arrow back? Let's see if we can find it. If we go to the Attributes Inspector, we go here. We can give the view controller a title and is initial view will put that arrow back so if you accidentally delete the arrow that says what the first view is put the arrow back by 
clicking is initial view. You can change lots of colors here and play around with button styles and all that. That's more details. But as far as using Xcode, you got your buttons up here, you got your hides, you got your stuff like that. Your errors are gonna be in this thing. You can search for stuff globally by typing in words there. You can run your tests, you can set breakpoints, and all that fun stuff. And that's kind of a big overview of what you need to know in order to get started with Xcode, and I hope it helps you.